What is going on YouTube? Just helping you out here. And for today's video, I will be doing chapter 23, problem 23, in the Fundamentals of Physics textbook, 8th edition by Gerald Walker, Halliday, and Resnick. Chapter 23 is all about Gauss' law, and in question 23, we are asked to calculate the linear charge density of an infinite line of charge. And so we know that the integral of the electric field dot your differential area is equal to your charge enclosed divided by epsilon sub zero, which is your vacuum permittivity constant. And so what I want to do here is actually draw two pictures, first with like kind of a 3D view. And so what you're gonna have is, say this is our line of charge. At a specific point along this line, your electric field is going to form a circular type shape around the line. So if you were to draw a side view, say this point represents your line of charge going into the page, and so you're going to see your electric field end right here, and it's going to be going out in every direction, all 360 degrees of a circle like that. And so if you imagine this as a line, you're going to have this going down at each point. So you're going to form a cylindrical Gaussian surface. And so these right here are your electric field vectors and your dA vector is going to be in the direction of your line of charge. So this represents, we'll say, dA. And then each of these is going to represent your electric field. And so your dA is in the same direction as your line of charge, and your electric field is perpendicular in every direction to that line of charge. And so since that's the case, your integral of E dot dA simplifies to E dot A, which is still equal to your charge enclosed over epsilon sub zero. And so we can find this value for A, which is the surface area of your Gaussian surface, which I mentioned before is this cylinder. The surface area of a cylinder is 2 pi RH. And so we can plug that in, and we'll have E dot 2 pi RH is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. And so in the problem we're looking for charge density, which we can actually relate to Q, and so your linear charge density is equal to Q over H. And so if we multiply both sides by H, that'll give us that Q is equal to lambda times H. And so now what we can do is plug this into here. And so that's gonna give us E times two pi RH is equal to lambda H over epsilon naught. And so now if you notice, we actually have an H on both sides. And so those can go. And then we can also multiply both sides by epsilon naught, and that's going to leave us with the linear charge density is equal to E times 2 pi r times epsilon naught. And now we actually have all those values, so lambda is equal to E, which is given in the problem as 4.5 times 10 to the fourth newtons per coulomb times 2 times pi times our radius, which we're told in the problem is two meters. And then finally times our vacuum permittivity constant, which is 8.84 times 10 to the negative 12th coulomb squared per Newton times meter squared. And if you plug all of those numbers into your calculator, you should find that the linear charge density is equal to five times 10 to the negative sixth coulombs per meter. Or you could say that is five micro coulombs per meter. And so that's about it for this problem. If you found this video helpful, please drop a like, leave a comment if you have a question or an idea for a future video, and lastly, please don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends about my channel so I can grow and help more of you guys out. I'm just helping you out. See you in the next video.